whole doctrine of minimal morality set forth by people like Rand and, and Wolf and, and many other uh, philosophers uh, in today's world, which I, I won't uh, quote at, at length, is, is threefold. First of all, when you call uh, people like saints boring, this may say more about us than about the saints themselves. Because what we find interesting or not interesting or boring is an aesthetic category, which, which is subjective. Unlike morality, which I think is objective and universal, aesthetics can vary to some degree at least from person to person. And what we find attractive uh, is, going to, is going to change with the individual. Some people find football very exciting. Other people find Mozart operas. And other people find nuclear physics. Uh, I find Mahatma Gandhi a very attractive and interesting person, whereas some people might find him, you know, rather a, a very poor fullback on a football team. Uh, he wouldn't do as well, wouldn't be as interesting there. So, uh, there's a sense in which I guess you could say that uh, what we find a boring or interesting says something more about us than about the object in question. But surely, uh, when we look at some of the saints and heroes of, of life, uh, not, to, not, to, not to mention Socrates, but to get to a 20th century one, one of my saints and heroes, Albert Schweitzer, a man with four PhDs, a, uh, a, a one of the leading Bach, uh, Bach scholars, and a man who was a leading organist at Strasbourg uh, uh, Reformed Church in, uh, in, in France. Uh, people like this certainly aren't, aren't boring, and yet uh, Schweitzer left all his fame and fortune and went and spent his life as a doctor. Instead of having a lucrative career in Switzerland or France, he went to Lamborghini, West Africa, and served the poor without pay virtually for the rest of his life, and served as a saint where he developed the idea of the reverence for life that all life is somehow was sacred and lived that out in a way that was inspiring to millions of people and influenced my life as a teenager very much. Uh, secondly, even if this, we say some, some saintliness is, uh, does lead to a less interesting life, uh, that may not be all bad. Sometimes we may have a duty to live uh, to give up some, uh, some fascinating aspects of life and, and make a sacrifice. Uh, perhaps you could uh, be a more interesting person if you uh, philandered more or, uh, you know, or gambled more or uh, even uh, did some other compromising activity. Uh, many, many, uh, uh, many women might have more interesting lives if they abandon their wives and their husbands and children. But uh, they may have an, a strong obligation not to do so and thus give up some, uh, some of the interestingness of life. I once had a, an argument with my teacher at Oxford, Philip of Foote, about this point. Uh, and the, the case in question was the, uh, the great artist Paul Gauguin, who you may know, abandoned his wife and five children and his job and went eventually to Haiti where he painted uh, enormously beautiful paintings. And I argued with her that Gauguin should have stayed home and uh, done whatever painting he could in France or Belgium rather than abandon his family because our duties to our, our spouses, our, our children outweigh any aesthetic kind of, of uh, glory. And she disagreed with me saying that, like Stu Susan Wolf, morality is not everything. Sometimes it's good just to chuck morality away and do what, what pleases you, what's more interesting. But uh, I think that uh, intuitively, we would say the world would be certainly worse off if uh, too many people did this. And it probably uh, wasn't right for Gauguin to do it either. Uh, Thirdly, um, one, can, one can, I think, argue that uh, one's personal development is so rooted in morality that even if it did lead to something, to some less interesting conclusion, they would be worth it because uh, one's 
inner being is perfected by developing one's intellectual, moral, and artistic skills too, but not in an order that would compromise one's moral commitments. People like Wolf say that morality is, uh, is valued too highly. But look, in our culture, isn't it the case that no one is going to criticize a baseball player for uh, wanting to be a perfect pitcher and getting close to that, throwing a perfect game a couple of times and maybe several times? Or no one's going to uh, critique uh, Sammy Sosa or Mark McGuire for trying to get more home runs and being a perfect hitter or as close to that as one can be. No one's going to, no one's going to judge a, uh, a wide receiver who tries to be a perfect wide receiver and never drop a pass that makes the sensational catches. And no one, hardly in our culture, criticizes people for wanting to be very beautiful or very rich. Those are all looked upon as admirable goals. But why is it then that people will criticize people who try to be moral as somehow compromising their essential self? Seems to me there's something that says, it, this says something more about us and our culture even a philosopher, than it does about morality itself. Because or without morality, uh, we're, we're done for, in a sense. Without moral heroes and saints, uh, the heart of our culture evaporates, and a state of Hobbesian nature, where life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short, is just around the corner. So for these, these reasons, uh, I would say that uh, that moral perfection or aiming at the good is uh, the highest point in life. Something that every one of us has a, a duty to strive for, even if we, we can't quite reach it in, a, in a, 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 an abiding way. Well, let me turn then to, uh, to some examples of uh, contemporary moral saints and heroes. Uh, again, uh, they seem to me not to be boring or dull or uninteresting at all. First one I think of is Mother Teresa, who uh, recently died and whom I, my wife and I visited in Calcutta and found a very uh, interesting conversationalist and witty and lively mind. Mother Teresa, of course, is renowned for taking uh, abandoned children off the streets of Calcutta and bringing him into the, uh, the convent uh, and uh, which I witnessed, these children now with smiles on their faces, singing songs and learning to read, uh, and graduating later, years later, as some of the most productive citizens of, uh, of East India. Uh, another moral saint I think of, or a moral hero, is Admiral Stockdale himself, who, uh, as he just, uh, just uh, recited some of the uh, some of the episodes in his life in a Vietnamese prison. To endure torture and, uh, and solitary confinement two years with a broken leg that was not fixed uh, takes a kind of moral courage that uh, should be admired and uh, serve as a role model for, for all of us. But there's, there's one recent, even more recent that I think of, uh, one, one role model that uh, or one moral hero that comes to mind that has just happened a, within a month or so ago, less than a month ago. I was once a minister in Bedford-Stuyvesant. I was a minister of a black church, a black and uh, a Hispanic church in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. And around the corner from my home, there was, a bodega, there was a store, now it's become a bodega, 